In this lab for computer engineering 64, we are doing lab 8 in the series. We're dealing with special design combinational circuits. So we need to derive equation of the system function using KMAPs. We are going to design a combination circuit in multi-sim from our KMAP equation. So this is really going to be two parts. In this first part, we're going to be making the truth table and the KMAP. After this, we are then going to graph this in our um, circuit simulator. That way we can see it and we can analyze it and play around with the switches. So first, we have a table to the left. It has four columns for ABCD, that's the input, and then we have two columns for the output. So we have A here, we have B here, C here, D here. Those are all inputs. And then we're gonna have output, so we have our F1, we are going to have a F2, and then when we actually make our K-maps, we're going to have to make an F2 and our F1 separately. Every K-map that we do, um, we can, when we make a table, we can make them together, but for every output, we have to have its own K-map. Super important. So in filling out a K-map, or actually filling out the table, this is our table, filling out the table, I like to actually make the K-map first. So when we make the K-map for something with four inputs, we are going to have A, B, uh, slash to separate them, and then C, D. Then uh, we want a four by four, since we have four in here. So we're just going to make four columns, and then we are going to make four rows. So this is gonna look like this. These are pretty bad looking columns, but they'll do the job. And then we're gonna want to make four rows like this. And then after we do these four rows, well, we are going to want to have all of the different combinations that we have with our circuits, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. So initially, we will have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Then for our CD, we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1. Now, there is an easier way to write this. For these first two, if we look at it, we can see that it's C naught. And then for these two, it's C. It's the same thing for these, except it's A naught, and then these, it's A. Now, when we look at the other side, we still have to write out our B and our D naught. So we're gonna start out from naught, from the uh, left to right, and then from top to bottom, it's gonna start out with naught. So here we're gonna have a D naught, then we're gonna alternate to a D, D naught, and then D. And then for our B, we're going to have B naught, B, B naught, and B. And so now we can fill out our table. So when we fill out the table for this, we're going to first look at our CD. And this is the back end right here. Looking at the back end, we're just going to run through these once, and then we're going to keep printing them. So we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we're going to do this again, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then we're going to do this two more times. Make sure that you uh, also keep the same order. So that is what that's going to look like. And now for these, we need to print out each one four times. So initially we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Then we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then lastly, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And so this is all of our inputs. Now we're going to look at our outputs. So I've color coded these F1 is going to be in blue and F2 will be in green. Since we know that we need to make two K-maps, what we can do is just copy this while it's empty before we fill it up and then just put it right here. So this one will be our blue one and then this one will be our green one. So for our blue one, for F1, uh, we have F1 will be high, which is one. That's the output. The output will be one when at least two inputs next to each other are high. So when two inputs next to each other are one, one, we will have an output of one. So obviously here, we're gonna have a zero. Here we will have a zero. We don't even have two ones, and then here we'll have a zero. Now here we have two ones next to each other. So we are going to have a one here. For this next one, we only have one, one. So that's a zero. Here we have two ones, but if we look back at the instructions, we say, 
the F1 will be high 1 when at least two points next to each other are high. Since they're not next to each other, this is a 0. This is going to be a 1 since they're next to each other. This will be a 1. This is a 0. This is a 0 because they're not next to each other. And then this is going to be a 0 because they're not next to each other. This is a 1. These two are next to each other. 1, 1, 1, 1. So that's our F1. We can now graph this. So when we look all of these zeros, we have these three zeros. This is basically index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. And then we have index 0, 1, 2, 3, and then it goes, keep going like that. So for index 0, we have a 0, and then for 1, we have a 0, and then 2, we have a 0. For 1, we have a 1. So it's right here. We can see that we have two ones together, so that makes sense. And next, we have two zeros, then we have two ones. This makes sense because this one would be next to this one because it's B and C. And then we have three zeros, one, two, three. And then lastly, the rest are ones. And so this is going to be our K-map. Now what we have to do is we have to combine some and then we can write the actual K-map equations. And after we write the K-map equations, we'll take these and put them into our multi-sim for the part two. So we're gonna look at this. We see that we have these four right here together. And then we have these four right here together. So we're going to use those and build our equation. Building our equation, well, if we look at all of these together, we can see that the rows are going to alternate and so we can't really use those. The C is the same and so is the D so we are going to combine these. We are going to have C, D and we're going to be doing this in uppercase. And next we have, we can do them in any order but we'll look at this one now. We can see we'll have a plus A because we're in this row and then we're also in B so we're going to have plus A, B and then lastly we have this one right here. For this one we can have a plus a naught, and then we have B, and then we have C. So this is going to be the equation for the one in blue. Next we're going to do the one in green. For green, our F2 will be high, 1, when at least two inputs next to each other are 0, and input D is 0. So when we look at these, for it to be valid, it has to have 0 at input D. This first one is a 1. This next one's a zero, and then we can look at all the ones and just zero them out. So zero here, zero here, zero here, zero here. And if you want more K-Map and actual table stuff, there is videos in the playlist linked below the like button. And this is also where the second part for this lab will be, where we actually go into multi-sim. So those are all zeroed out. Next, we are going to look at where our inputs have at least two zeros next to each other. This one has two zeros next to each other, so this is going to be a one. And um, just for learning purposes, we have two zeros next to each other here. However, we have a one in the D, which is why it's zero, because both conditions have to be true because we have an and statement right here. We have two zeros next to each other. This is a one. It can include the D. It never says that it can't. This one um, is going to be a zero because we don't have two zeros next to each other. This is a one. Uh, this is a zero because we don't have two zeros next to each other. Um, this is a 1, and then this is a 0. So now we can graph this, or we can K-map graph it. So we have 1 here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. There's two ways you can go about graphing this. You can either see that you have a 1, and then look at all of these, and then look at here, and look at here, or you can just go row by row, looking at the indexes. I usually look at the indexes if I have both. So now we can draw this out. We have all of these that we're going to compare to, and then we are also going to have these that we can compare to. So let's look at the long row first. Here we have a C naught, and then we also have a D naught. So that's it for that row, and then we're going to look at these two. And for these two, well, we have a a naught and a B naught. So we will do a, oh, we also have a D naught because we can see that this is in the D naught row, or sorry, column, and this is in the D naught column. So we'll have a plus A naught, B naught, 
and d naught. And so those are the two KMAP equations that we're going to use for the two input.